here at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And Chris is out in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Can I have the next patient, please? Hi, hi. It's double trouble. Siblings, 11-year-old Harry and 8-year-old Maya. So, Harry, Maya, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? I've come because I've got a squint in my right eye. And I've got a squint in my eye. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got a squint in my right eye and I've got a squint in my eye-itis. I agree. Can you open the eyelid and we'll see if we can see it? It's quite hard to see, but it is visible. Maya's right eye is wandering off a little bit when she looks up. It's not quite pointing in the same direction as her left eye. Now, Harry, can you make it happen? Oh, yeah, look at that. What kind of things have you done for the squint? I've had to do these eye exercises. I've had to have a patch therapy, which is putting a patch over my eye. That's been quite annoying. Do you guys have any questions for me? So what's actually happening inside your eye? The problem is that one eye isn't working as well as the other eye. And that means the brain decides to ignore the image from one eye and concentrate on the good eye, at which point it stops controlling the muscles around your eye and it begins to wander off. Well, thank you very much for bringing your amazing eyes to the Ouchmobile. Thank you. Thank you. Away from the clinic, Chris is out and about answering your burning questions. Why do you get shorter during the day? What do you mean? You're tallest when you wake up and then yeah. as you walk around all day you get shorter? Yeah. That's a really good question. Because between each one of your vertebra, which is the bones in your spine, you've got a jelly-like disc. And over the course of the day, that gets squeezed and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Dinesh, why did you care about whether or not you were shrinking at a theme park? Because of the height restrictions. Oh, so you could go on the rides? Yeah. Can I have the next patient, please? Back at the Ouchmobile are brothers 10-year-old William and 8-year-old Callum. So, William, Callum, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? Because we've got bendy, bendy fingers, fingers and, and we can stick our shoulder, shoulder blade, blade out. out. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of we've got bendy fingers and I can stick my shoulder blade out. Itis! Easy for you to say. So, William, can you open up the eyelid on the Ouch Cam? OK, now let's have a look. So, that's amazing. Both Callum and William have got what we call hypermobile joints, meaning they've got a bigger range of motion than most other people do. So, William, can we have a look at your shoulder blades? <laughs> oh, wow. So, put it back and then pop it out again. So, can you do the same thing, Callum? Yes. Have you got any questions about that for me? Why can we do it? The reason that you can do it is probably because you've got very stretchy collagen. And collagen is the molecule that holds your whole body together. It's your body's equivalent, really, of elastic bands. So some people are held together by, if you like, very strong elastic bands, and then you guys are held together by much more stretchy elastic bands. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. William, Callum, thanks very much for bringing your amazing bodies to the Ouchmobile. It was great, okay. thanks. Job done for today. Clinic closed. We're giving you exclusive access to the Accident and Emergency Department. Let's meet our first patient. Waiting to be seen is eight-year-old Chris and his dad. Brilliant name, but that hand looks bad. It's sore and it's hurting. Ooh, what happened? Chris was in the garden with his sister and two of her mates. They were all playing... Britain's Got Talent! Oh yes! Can I be Simon Cowell? It's a no from me. Anyway, the girls were the judges, hands poised over their buzzers, watching the best act of the day. It was... A dog dressed as a spaceman juggling ice creams? Even better than that, Chris was doing parkour, so jumping and rolling off stuff. Well, sounds fun. Yes, but as he did his final move, a gravity-defying don't-try-this-at-home leap, he slipped on some moss and cut his hand on the gate. Ouch! Don't worry, Chris. Here's Dr. Claire Thompson. You sliced it on metal, didn't you? So what we'll do is we'll send you for a little X-ray on your mm. hand to make sure there's no little pieces or anything yeah. that shouldn't be. If Chris has any metal in his cut, it could get infected. You can see the cup, can't you? See where it looks more black yeah. in there? But there's no bits of metal. There's nothing else in there. It's looking good. It is. Next up, Dr. Claire makes sure Chris hasn't lost any feeling in his hand. 
Can you feel this? It, I can't feel it that much. It could have damaged the nerves, which then might have um, caused the sensation to be lost. Is it going to need stitching? Yeah. Because this is a deep cut in a complicated place, Chris needs to come back tomorrow for surgery. So, with a temporary patch up, it's off home for the night. We'll be back later to see how Chris gets on. <laughs> and now to our lab. It's time for some big body experiments. Some of them gory. This is not for the squeamish. Some extreme. It's freezing! We're ready. Are you? Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, we're looking at your eyebrows. Sand, what are you doing? And what is on your face? Do you like my new look? Mm -hmm. I, I thought I'd see if longer eyebrows suited me, but to tell the truth, I'm having a little trouble seeing anything. I can't find the mirror. I mean, you can look if you want, but I promise that you look absurd. And there's actually a good reason why your eyebrows are the length they are, and it's largely to stop them getting in your eyes. These aren't exactly practical, but if I style them a little bit... Did you know that every hair on your body has a set maximum growing length? Now, some of the hairs on your body, like your eyelashes or eyebrows, will have a much shorter maximum length compared to the hairs on your head. So, unfortunately, I'll never be able to grow my real eyebrows as long as this, which is a real shame. And, in fact, however long you try and grow the hair on your head, it will only ever get to its maximum growing length too. And I have just the sample in the cupboard of everything to prove it. <laughs> Now, what I've got here is an amazingly long hair sample. Look, it's 110 centimetres long. Honestly, Zandi, you have to start giving your samples their proper names. This is Anisha. Yeah, Anisha, sample, whatever. Now, Anisha, how long have you been growing your hair? One year. Wow, Anisha's hair grows as fast as Zan's eyebrows. We can tell what growing stage your hair is at by looking at one under a microscope. I need a sample. Anisha, would you mind? Sure, I've got this, Chris. Wow! Here you go. Thank you. What was that for? I needed a sample. You're the sample. <sighs> this freshly plucked hair from Zahn's head is still in the growing stage. It has a very dark root. This is where the cells are busy multiplying, making the hair grow longer and longer. For some of the hairs on your body, like the ones on your head, this can last for up to five years. Well, for other hairs on your body, like your eyebrows, it lasts for just a few months, always keeping them shorter. Right, Anisha, I think we need another sample. Oh, no, you don't. Don't worry, Zand. We'll just grab one that's fallen out already onto your shoulder. Here you go. This hair fell off Zand's head. Unlike the freshly plucked hair, there are no live cells around the root, so they're no longer multiplying like this one. This shows us the hair is old and stopped growing long before it fell out. Every hair on your body has a maximum growing length and your body is amazing at knowing which hairs should be longer than others. Which is why your eyebrows should never, ever get into your eyes. Anisha, would you mind? Sure. Ow! Get back in the cupboard. Sand! So your eyebrows will always be short, but have you ever wondered what they're actually for? Ta-da! Sand, what have you done now? I'm just getting ready for our experiment. One of us needed to not have eyebrows, so ta-da! Oh, well, good job. Wait a minute! Is that my bathing cap? Uh, no, no. Th this is the Dr. Zand Patented Eyebrow Eliminator. <laughs> Why is it blue? There was a mix-up at the factory? Mm -hmm. Throughout human evolution, we've lost much of the hair on our bodies, but our eyebrows still remain. Now, scientists argue that one of the jobs of eyebrows is to keep rain and sweat out of our eyes. But is this true? To find out, I'm going to drop water over Zahn's head as if there was a massive rainstorm or he was very sweaty. Oh, that's, that's very unpleasant. It doesn't feel like it's flowing down my face in the normal way. And what will happen with shampoo? Ah! <laughs> it's very peculiar. No eyebrows means the liquid flows straight into my eyes. But any good experiment needs a control, and in this case, the control has to have eyebrows, which means it's you. So it's Chris's turn. Let's see if having eyebrows does a better job of protecting his eyes. It certainly feels like most of the water is being guided off here and running down the side of my face. 
you can see that Chris's eyebrows are diverting the water flow around the side of his face. Whereas poor old eyebrowless Zahn had liquid running into his eyes. And now, the final part of the experiment, the shampoo. <laughs> no, well... it didn't keep the shampoo out of eyes. That really stings. <laughs> So, eyebrows were good enough to keep water out, but they failed miserably with shampoo. Eyebrows are not 100% effective. <laughs> uh, can I have a little water rinse, please? <laughs> We've shown you that every hair has a maximum growing length, so certain hairs, like eyebrows, are stopped from getting too long. And we've shown you that your brows are very good at protecting your eyes from things like rain or sweat but they're not perfect. But we've kept them for another important reason. They're really useful at making good facial expressions and communicating with other people. <laughs> We're on call with the West Midlands Ambulance Service, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. Jan alone can do 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day, and a new case is just in. We've just received a call about a 75-year-old man who's fallen over and hurt his shoulder. So, of course, we need to assess that shoulder injury. We also need to work out why did he fall. I've got my ouch can here. Eric in the back has his big camera. And we're going to get you right up so you can find out what it's like to be first on scene. We quickly arrive and head inside to see Gerard, who's with his family. My name's Jan. What's happened? You fell out of bed this morning. OK. He was only let out of hospital yesterday. OK. You've landed on your shoulder. Yeah. Can I have a quick feel? Is that OK? OK. No so... pain when I'm pressing down your back? No. No. So your neck and your back are fine. Can you bring your head and look over your shoulder for me? So Gerard's just come out of hospital, so he really doesn't want to go back in. One of the main valuable things that Jan can do here is assess Gerard, make sure that he's safe, and most importantly, she's checking his nerves, and his bones and his muscles to make sure that they're all working well after that fall. Are you able to move that shoulder? Yeah. After Jan is happy that Gerard's shoulder's OK, she does some tests to try and find out what caused his fall. So Jan's doing Gerard's observations, and these are the really important numbers that tell us how sick or well someone is. Temperature, yeah. blood pressure and pulse. Oh, just double-check your blood pressure when you stood up, if that's OK. It's got a history in the past of postural hypotension. Um, postural hypotension is whenever you stand up, your blood pressure drops, and it can cause you to pass out. So that drop in blood pressure can mean not enough blood gets to the brain and he faints. And you might have felt the same thing if you've been lying down very sleepily and then you stand up quickly, you can feel a bit dizzy. And in some older people, that can be more of a problem. So don't move, just stand where you are. That's good. Right then, sit down. How was that, Jan? That's good. It's gone up to 162.84. So that's all right. Yeah, so that's fine. Jan's happy that Gerard's postural hypotension is under control, so he won't need to be admitted to hospital. You can stay here and I can leave him in your capable hands. Mm -hmm. Well, Gerard, thank you very, very much. And I'm pleased, very pleased you get to stay out of hospital. Thank you. In a sense, one of the most valuable things that Jan can do is keep people out of hospital. Yes, a lot of the time, she fixes them up, ready for the ambulance to take them in and be properly treated. But actually, we've done an amazing thing here. She's just made Gerard feel better and he can stay at home and enjoy an evening with his family. <laughs> In the waiting room, seven-year-old Sophie has come in with mum and dad and a cut hand. Who's that, Chris? That's Tab. Oh, hi, Tab. So, how did Sophie hurt her hand? With a sharp knife. A sharp knife? Ouch! Sophie was in her bedroom doing some arts and crafts. Cool! Was she making paper aeroplanes? I don't know, Zan. Well, was she making a selfie portrait, then? It doesn't matter what she was making, Zan. The point is, she decided she needed something sharp. Sharp? Sounds dangerous. So, off she went to fetch a knife without asking Mum or Dad. Oh, no! And as she was using it, the knife slipped and cut her thumb. Ouch! Was Tab there? She was downstairs. So Tab couldn't help, but consultant Matt Rotherham can, and he's going to take a closer look. Ooh, that looks like a deep cut. First, the doc checks the movement and sensation in Sophie's hand. Can you wiggle your thumb? Mm -hmm. Very good. 
Can you feel me touching your thumb on that side? Looking for damage to the veins and the nerves and the tendons that control movement. Your hand contains nerves that give you feeling and tendons which allow it to move. Some tendons and nerves are very close to the surface of your skin and a deep cut like Sophie's can easily damage them. It could mean you lose feeling or you're unable to move your hand properly, which is why a bad cut often needs surgery to fix it. Can you bend your thumb at the end like that? The doc's checking that Sophie can move her thumb properly. You're not bending her thumb, are you? She could straighten her thumb, but she didn't seem to be able to bend it. We have to take that seriously and assume that it could be due to the injury, so I'm going to get the plastics team to... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've had to refer her to a specialist. They can decide whether they need to have a look at that wound under an anaesthetic. In the meantime, Sophie's cut is cleaned and patched up with butterfly stitches, and we'll find out later if she needs surgery. Can you guess who today's hero is? Well, I'll give you a clue. You'll have met today's hero when you were as old as this little guy, but you won't remember. Did you guess it? Today's hospital hero is head midwife Simon. In the UK, there are 700,000 babies born every year. And luckily for us, there are thousands of midwives who make sure they arrive safely. Before mums go into labour, the natural process when a baby is born, midwives like Simon give special training called antenatal classes. So I want you to imagine you've got a really, really big bump. So one of the things that happens when you go into labour is you get these pains that come across your tummy and your natural instinct would be to tense up. So one of the most important things you can do when you're a woman in labour is be as relaxed as possible. Simon has some top tips on relaxation techniques. Right, I want you to imagine that you're sat on a really sunny beach. Take a really big breath, that's it, and out again. No snoring, Zand. So the next thing I'm going to teach you about is how to get the baby in the best position. So you want it to be head down and its head either to one side or the other side. There are exercises to help with this too. We've seen just how important midwives are for helping women to deliver their babies. But will our time as midwives be as smooth as a baby's bottom? It's time for us to take over as midwives. Your challenge today is you're going to teach an antenatal class to some real pregnant women. We're going to be judged on niceness, relaxation skills and communication. I have been going to antenatal classes because my wife is about to have a baby. Sand, how are you feeling? I'm just wondering if I can use the birthing ball to sort of bounce the babies out. We'll both be trying our best with these three very kind mums-to-be. I hope they know what they've let themselves in for. Simon will be watching our every move. First of all, how nice can we be? Judging from bumps, you're all fairly advanced in pregnancy. Amy, you're the most due, aren't most you? Most advanced, yeah. OK. <laughs> He's been really nice. Yes. His eye contact and just his general manner was lovely. Step aside for Grandmaster Nice. Can we start off sitting on the balls? Is that ball approximately OK for you? That's fine, thank you. Lovely. He's given Becky the biggest ball, which is good, cos she's really tall. Very nice, really warm and friendly. OK, time to relax. Taking a really deep breath in through your nose, and out through your mouth, and feel your shoulders going relaxed. That's really good. Really relaxed. I really liked the um, visualising technique that he used, closing my eyes. It was really good. Top that, Zand. What I want you to imagine is that you are on a beach. Maybe you can feel the sand, hear the waves crashing. He's described it really well. The beach and the sea. Touche, Chris. Finally, how's our communication? If the baby is in a back labour position... So back. I've got the baby the wrong way around. Get it right, Chris. He head the other way. <laughs> Is the wrong way around there. Ha! Snap! So, one of the really good things you can do, if you stand up straight, having a straight back with that nice lumbar lordosis, we call it, the curve of the back. That was a bit technical. Lumbar schmumba, Chris. Some of the words Chris used were a bit over my head. It's actually quite uh, terrifying to talk to a group of pregnant women who are this pregnant. Um, if you come across a bit nervous, they might not believe what you say. On the pillow between your legs and just slightly tilt it over. I'm getting the mums-to-be to try various positions to help get the baby in the right one for it to be born. Up to you, Chris, but I'm showing them how it should be done. 
pillow between your legs is to try and have the pelvis a bit more open, and that allows the baby's head to shift down a bit. Trying more positions ourselves rather than just talking about it would have been maybe a bit more helpful. Thank you very, very much indeed. Good luck. Class dismissed. It's time for the verdict. Simon, how did we do? So, from a relaxation perspective, the women felt relaxed in both of the classes, so you did a good job. So, a dead heat for relaxation, really? Niceness. Your mum would be really proud of you both. You're both really, really nice. Aww. Yeah. So, it's down to the final category, communication. And you were really quite nervous. OK. And Chris was quite happy to get the women to move around and do stuff. Oh. You tended to talk more about it. Simon, who is the overall winner of today's challenge? Dr Chris. Oh. You know what, this is the one challenge that I'm happy to lose because it's quite important that you know what you're doing when your wife has a baby soon. If there's one thing we've learned today, it's that midwifery is definitely best left to the professionals. Time to hand our jackets back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you. Hi, everyone. Well, since we filmed Operation Ouch, I have had a baby. Look at this. This is Lyra. Ouch, viewers. Meet an ouch baby. All that Lyra does at the moment is eat and sleep and scream and poo in huge quantities, don't you? So she's a bit like her Uncle Zand, really. Oi, cheeky.